So now we're going to talk about why we don't use degrees when we're talking about angular quantities for motion. So what we just did is we introduced the basic variables that we use for rotation. And now we're going to talk about the units that we use for rotation. And the, and the fundamental unit for displacement is in radian. So here's why. Here's the big idea. So if we want to use theta in degrees and x in meters, if I was interested in how far, let's say that we had a record like this again, it's like this kind of thing. And let's say that we dropped a a little ball of clay on it and the ball of clay was spinning on the edge of the record and we were interested in relating how far the ball of clay moved around the circle to how many rotations the disc made or the record made with a with degrees there's 360 degrees in one rotation but there's no easy way to translate that to a linear distance around the outside what a radian does is it creates a relationship that's that's set up on the on the radius of the rotating object and the circumference of the path an object takes. You already you are already familiar whether or not you're in trig with the basics of what a radian's good for. If we look at a circle and consider its radius. call that R. If we know the radius, then we also know the circumference because we're familiar with the geometry ratio. Now this C here is a linear distance. C is the linear distance around the outside of the circle. So if I drop a ball of clay on the rotating disc and it starts here and goes all the way around, as long as I know the radius, I also know the linear distance of how far that ball of clay traveled because of this helpful 2 pi here. So if we have a ratio, if we create a ratio of c to r, we end up with a measurement of 2 pi for a ratio here of 2 pi for a circumference of once around to the radius of the circle. Let's say that you have the same basic circle with the same radius, but now instead of traveling the whole way around, let's say you drop a ball of clay on the outer edge of it and it travels this far, we'll call it S. When you have a linear displacement for an object in circular motion, then we often use the variable S to represent arc length. So the ball of clay travels from here to here, which is an arc length of S. Now if we take a piece of ribbon and measure out a distance R here, and then take out, and then take that same piece of ribbon and lay it along the circle such that S equals R, then we have a specific angle here. which is going to give us an angle of one radian. What radians do for us is they create an angular measure that's actually a relationship between how far, um, between the distance, the linear distance, the a point on the circle travels, to the radius of the circle itself. So again, what a radian does is it sets up a relationship between arc length and radius. Now what, why that's valuable for us Why that's valuable for us is it sets up a, transla like a translation system. It sets up a 
factor that we can use to go from one set of variables to the other. So if we have linear information about a circle, we can translate it to angular information as long as we remember this proportion, that arc length over radius equals the angular displacement radians. So if you are, for instance, looking at v equals delta x over t and omega equals delta theta over t. If you want to go from one to the other, we can use the, the relationship that since... Okay, so just to make sure, this is only when s equals r. When s equals r, theta is one. But a general rule is s over r equals theta. So the angular, the linear distance an object travels is equal to the radius of, the of a circle of the circle it's traveling, times the angular displacement in, in radians. So this is a linear displacement. This is an angular displacement. And so the translator is this r factor. So angular displacement times r equals linear displacement for an object moving in a circle. Going back up here, how I started, remember that if you want to know how, if I drop a ball of clay right here, and it goes once around, we know that the distance it goes is 2 pi radians. So that means that for the arc length is, is a f full circumference, then the angular displacement for once around is 2 pi. So in this case, 2 pi radians is once around. One kind of funny thing about radians, if you look at the actual units, circumference, let's say, is measured in meters. Radius is also measured in meters. So there's no actual units. There's no dimension here because we have meters divided by meters. So the units cancel. But often, in, in, so in math, you almost never write RAD or something after an angular measure. In physics, though, just for clarity, a lot of times we do write radians. We do represent radians in our work. So it wouldn't be uncommon for you to say for it once around, theta equals 2 pi radians. OK, so the last thing I want to go over is the fact that this R translator can be used for n, any angular measure, whether it's theta, omega, or alpha. So, so again, just to set up our translators, we know linear displacement equals r times angular displacement. Since this is true, everything else follows the same way. Velocity equals r times angular velocity. So if we want to know the linear speed of an object that's moving in a circle, if we know the angular speed and the radius of the circle, we can make that translation. And finally, a equals r alpha. So those will help us move from one to the other.